All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining me now, Newsmax TV's John Bachman with more on Donald Trump's ongoing feud with Judge Gonzalo Curiel and the Republican reaction. John? Yeah, Steve, we knew the Democrats were going to pile on Donald Trump claiming judicial interference, but that's easy to defend against. Remember President Obama lecturing the Supreme Court from the dais during the State of the Union address in 2011? Well, the issue here for a lot of Republicans, and Marco Rubio, just the latest to jump on this bandwagon, is Donald Trump going after this judge, not in such a political way as much as it is a personal way, and that could foreshadow big problems for the party during the general election. <laughs> It was inappropriate. That is the word Donald Trump is now using in response to Newt Gingrich, the current favorite to be the GOP VP nominee, telling the party's current presidential pick to tone it down. This is one of the worst mistakes Trump has made. And I think it's inexcusable. This is no longer the primaries. He's no longer an interesting contender. He is now the potential leader of the United States, and he's got to move his game up to the level of being a potential leader. The former House Speaker, just one of several high-profile Republicans condemning Trump and urging him to unite the party fast. Here's Senate Foreign Relations Chairman Bob Corker, also a possible VP pick. Look, I, uh, I don't condone the comments, and we can press on to another topic. And then former GOP presidential candidate and current Ohio Governor John Kasich, who, unlike Corker and Gingrich, has not yet endorsed Trump, tweeted, attacking judges based on their race and or religion is flat out wrong. Donald Trump should apologize to Judge Curiel and try and unite this country. Curiel was born in Indiana to parents who immigrated from Mexico in the 1920s. He has not responded to Trump's attacks, but he has released documents to the public, some unflattering, pertaining to the case and Trump University. This judge has treated me very unfairly. He's treated me in a hostile manner. And still, despite the urging of Republican leaders, Trump remains unwilling to back down, adding on CBS's Face the Nation that a Muslim judge would be unfair because of Trump's proposed travel ban on followers of that religion. It's possible, yes. Yeah, that would be possible, absolutely. All this tension, testing Trump's delicate treaty with GOP leaders, Trump claims he's just defending himself. All I'm trying to do is figure out why I'm being treated so unfairly by a judge. But his approach leaves serious questions about his ability to unite the party and the estimated 44 percent of registered independent voters the party will need to defeat Hillary Clinton. Well, again, the issue here comes down to money. The concern is the longer it takes for the GOP and Donald Trump to really look like they are coming together, the harder it is going to be to raise the money needed. And also advertising. Here's a point. Uh, BuzzFeed backing out of a $1.3 million uh, deal with the Republican National Committee, Steve, to run political ads on its website because they say Trump's rhetoric is like cigarettes. They don't want to be like cigarettes ads. They say both are hazardous to your health. Well, what has, to ha what has to happen, I think, John, as in every walk of life where conservatives in the mainstream of America don't react, is they got to give a message to BuzzFeed. They got to give a message to these corporations who won't come to the R Republican convention and say, you don't go, we're going to boycott you. Uh, it's a small group of people that get together and threaten boycotts and force these kinds of things. And uh, I think the majority of Americans need to speak up and, and fight back. But I don't know how easy that'll be to do. Thanks, John. Appreciate it as always.